my privilege to share the word, and I believe it was a word given to me some months ago <coughs> in the gallery. It was, it was, it came as a surprise. Are your eyes, ears open this morning to hear what the Lord is going to say through me? Um, the title is Draw Closer or Drift Away. Now, would you mind to show, if you forget everything I've said, the one thing I want you to remember is those symbols that is crucial. Derek, Rosita, God. When God's will is done, we grow closer. When my will be done, we drift apart and I'm going to share on that um, I picked out three scriptures now I hope you bear with me I am not a natural standing here teaching or preaching or sharing so bear with me listen carefully and be gracious to me. If I stumble, please forgive me. So, so I've picked out a, a few scriptures. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, seeking God's kingdom has totally different principles than the kingdom of the world. So we have to have insight through the word of God, through teaching, preaching, sharing, that we get a different perspective, God's perspective, what his kingdom is all about. James 4, 4 to 6, adulteress and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? The Lord wants our attention because he has a plan and for his purposes and plan to come into being, we need to give our all. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, if you look at that symbol again, if I say, my will be done, that is pride. And we don't get anywhere in God's kingdom if we don't bow the knee. If I say, Lord, your will be done, that requires humility. So the different rules and the different standards apply. Now, oh, sorry. So I ask you to forgive me. I, I <laughs> um, sin and pride the middle letters of sin is the I. The middle letter of pride is the I. What do you think is the problem? It is I, me, myself, my will. And that had to die in order to live God's purposes in our lives. So it requires a radical commitment. Not, well, I'm going to try God's thing a bit. No, 
100% commitment. That is what it requires. Can I have slide two? I think we are sort of slightly de macar. <laughs> <laughs> but I can carry on because I'm, I've got it all here on paper. What is required? It is repentance. And if repentance requires humility, now none of us is born humble. Do you agree? Because I like it my way. That is not humility, because if, if I say my way, if I say, Lord, your way, that requires, and that is humility. Let's read Peter 1, 5, and 6, and 1, sorry, 1, 5, 5, and 6. Therefore, and you will find humbling is many times in the various scriptures I am going to read from. Humble yourself before the Lord under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Another scripture, Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Now, who does not want riches and honor and life? So, humility is the answer. Proverbs 15.33 says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So, if you like to look it up, go to Auntie Google. She will tell you a lot more about humility, and she will tell you a lot of scriptures to look up. Now, humility paves the way to honor, wisdom, and life. Pride paves the way to the fall. The law, because if I and proud, I'm not keen to ask. And like when you've got children, if a child persists doing their own will, well, you will let them go and make mistakes, and that is what happens. So let's deal with pride. Now, I wanted to get a little bit closer to what pride really is. So I, I looked up in my... Uh, Africa, no, in my Dutch English dictionary, the description of pride. Now, I'd never heard of the word overweening opinion of one's own qualities. <laughs> oh? Feeling of elevation. Ooh. Highly opinionated. Ooh. Arrogant, feeling of independence and self-centeredness. Well, looking at that, I realize that is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I promise you, humility is having a low estimate of one's own importance, be of modest pretensions and quick to apologize. Now, Derek, he is really very, very good with apologizing. Uh, I have never been a very easy auntie. So, uh, Derek learned at a very young age, or very young in our marriage, to, <laughs> to move in the opposite spirit. Now that requires practice, it requires humility, and he got it right. And do you know, it is the most powerful tool to undo 
something that could explode in your face. It really is, it, it works the opposite. There I could start singing and say, have I told you lately that I love you? Well, who can fight? <laughs> or he'd say, thank you, Lord, for giving me such a beautiful wife. The, the fight is over. There is no fight. There is laughter. So it is an incredible tool. And don't forget this. So I'm going to give you a few more sort of examples of um, this auntie that has been very proud. And that was actually out of my insecurity, my feeling I haven't got it, what it takes. And I think one can easily swing to looking superiority through your inferiority. So I'm going to point out a few things. <clears throat> uh, we've been married now 44 years, better than ever before. So that is a testimony to the goodness of God and that it works to let God's will be done in your life. Um, my marriage, our marriage, it is a covenant, and it is a reflection of our commitment to the Lord. It is a parallel. And um, there are many, 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 many stumbling blocks in our way. And in our marriage, with the auntie like me, plenty. There were plenty of stumbling blocks. And so I had to be honest and say, Lord, your will be done in my life. Show me. Now, <clears throat> I was very independent, and I was proud to be independent. Now, my independence was I had a mother who was 44 times in hospital by the time I was 20. What meant I was mommy to my brother, my two brothers and my sister, many a time, washing and ironing and cleaning and cooking, even from the age of about 10. So I was proud, I didn't need help, I could do it all myself, so I, this was me. Now, I had a health shop in Johannesburg, and the lady who worked for me was a little older myself, and she had for ever helpers. And one, it, it puzzled me. I thought, why do I slave always in this place and I never get help? And sort of I brought it to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, you have not because you ask not. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> that's right. Villa always was the smallest and willing to ask for help. But that didn't quite go deep enough into my spirit to realize my independence. So um, we adopted a cat, but the cat did not adopt us. So for many years, <laughs> this cat was a stranger under our roof. It never accepted us. It made itself heard loud and clear if it needed food, and that was about all. So it was not, it disappointed me because I like to love and cuddle and do, but no, this cat didn't want to have anything of it or me. Now, <laughs> one day I came home from intercession, I think it was about nine o'clock, and there I said, I don't know what happened to the cat. I heard a bang, something dropping, and a scream, and here the cat is on the stoop, totally paralyzed. And all you could see, the eyes went like this. So we were quite 
we were puzzled what had happened to the cat. So the next morning early, we to I took the cat to the vet. And <laughs> the vet said, um, it's a stroke. I thought, a cat having a stroke? That is impossible. <laughs> so he said, I would suggest give it four days, and if it doesn't heal in four days, they'll come and bring it back, and we will deal with the cat. So oh, he said, you must just with a little dropper, eye dropper, give him as much liquid as you can to, to stop him, her, from he dehydrating. So I decided to close the gallery and sit with the cat as long as I could the whole day on my lap with this little dropper feeding water. And lo and behold, the cat, within four days, was almost back to normal, started eating again. But here comes the, the story, the cat's life was once and for all changed. I became the cat's savior. I'm not lying. If I sat, she would sit on my lap. If I'm in the kitchen, you'd go to the kitchen. If I go to bed, she's on the bed with me. She became totally fell in love with me. And there the Lord showed me. The cat was totally independent until it realized it was, had become totally dependent. It was dependent on me. I had saved her life. What a lesson. I then only realized how much I missed out by my in dependent spirit, never willing to ask, not realizing that whatever I had was from God. So that was a very, very big lesson on independence. We read earlier, self-opinionated. Oh my goodness, that is a bad one. If you're self-opinionated, it's very difficult to learn or to hear or to respond because you always know it better. So it is a sin that truly needs to be dealt with. And we need to lay it at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I can't change myself. Would you please help me? Recognizing is the first step. Now, <clears throat> another one you would like to hear is uh, in the Afrikaans, in the Hollands taal, when I was young, my dad used to say, Kind, jij bent een kattenkop. <laughs> en als jij zo kattenkop blijft, ga je nooit een man vinden. <laughs> well, so, I, it didn't sort of go from here to there um, until the Lord stepped in to the picture to show me what the katakop is. So <laughs> we came the one Sunday morning out of church. And we, Derek and I, we have a wonderful relationship. Uh, but it was all of a sudden, it was as if there was an ice block separating us. And I kept on saying, darling, uh, uh, is there something wrong? Have I? What is this? Have I done something wrong? No. Uh, but what is wrong with you? No. So it was. I didn't get anywhere <laughs> with asking him. And the whole day went past this separation in the same room but separate. And uh, I was getting extremely worried, thinking. Where do I go? What do we do? So we went to bed, and Derek was fast asleep. And I thought, no, Lord, I, you are the only one who knows everything, so I'll come and ask you if there is anything I did to upset Derek. And uh, <laughs> the Lord said, it is the little foxes that has stolen from the vineyard. Now, 
I was a relatively young Christian, and I thought, foxes, vineyard, where does that fit in? I, I couldn't quite work out until the Lord dug a little bit deeper and showed me snippets of my kattekoppigheid and my lack of respect for Derek and my being irritable and be and as the Lord showed those snippet one by another, all of a sudden I realized my incredible fault and how patient Derek had been with me. So I woke him up crying my eyes out saying, darling, please, the Lord has shown me that and that and that. Forgive me. And it was sweet, sweet, sweet union as if everything was cleaned. And then the Lord showed me, when we walk in sin, unrepentant sin, there comes something between me and the Holy Spirit. Like, where are you, Holy Spirit? I don't feel you. I don't sense you. I don't exactly the same what the Lord showed me in the natural with Derek and myself. So sin brings sort of a bit of a separation. The Lord says sin separates. And that, and that whole week I was so aware of the Holy Spirit and the Lord working in me. Um, then the Lord showed me a hardened heart. And you know, the Lord can not do anything with you, when you, or me, the Lord showed it with me first, when our hearts are hardened. The Lord cannot do anything because we will not be willing to hear or to listen. We will not be able to see and there will not be a humility to bow the knee and repent. And with a hardened heart, we grieve the Holy Spirit and we quench the Holy Spirit. So for me, every day before I go to bed, I truly ask the Lord, Lord, are there areas? Have I hardened my heart? And, and bring your heart before the Lord, because the Lord will, in his faithfulness, he'd love us to come and be honest with ourselves and with him. So those are just a few of the, and <laughs> if some of you can identify with it, well, you know the way. <coughs> and what the Lord, yeah, we'd forgotten about the... Uh, <laughs> Don't delay dealing with all sin. All sin separates. Sexual impurity, pornography, slander, lying, unforgiveness, self-righteousness, compromise, the list goes on. I will stop here. You know, we find I was a liar. For many years I lied because I did not want to live in the past, which for me was not very good, so I would paint it totally different so people would never really know who I was. Because it was sort of almost defense mechanism setting that up. Until indeed again, the Lord in his mercy showed me you have a lying spirit. And then the Lord showed me where it came from, and I could deal with it. Um, unforgiveness is another one, but it's very difficult to not uh, to, to give up, because we find ways of justifying. You know, they first have to come and ask me, come for apologize, because I was maybe 10% wrong, but they were 90%. So we justify 
um, unforgiveness. And there are many, many sin, but we make room in our hearts, and we shouldn't. We should not make room in our heart for sin. See it for what it is. Repent of it. Embrace correction. I'm almost finished. Is that okay? Um, embrace correction and then accept God's forgiveness. And you know, without repentance, don't ever forget the symbols there. Oh, here we are at the last, at the last one. Um, we can only grow closer when we are honest and repent. If I keep on thinking, oh no, I get away with it, you know it can be devastating circumstances if we grow and drift away because then the temptations which come our way, we may not have the willpower to come against it. We may fall more and more easily in sin and separation, and the consequences can be very, very severe. So uh, embrace correction, accept God's forgiveness. Then here comes Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction. Now, I thought, what does, it sounds very deep. I thought, what does it really mean in the Hollandse Taal? And then, minachting. And in the Afrikaanse Taal, it is also minachting. And I thought, who? that is a very strong word. So, <clears throat> If we do not embrace correction, poverty and shame will come to us if we disdain correction. But he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Well, the choice is easy. I'd rather be honored or... Um, in poverty and shame um, come to that place. So temptation will come to each and every one of us, and daily. I don't think there is anyone sitting here who says, oh, no, I'm never tempted. Ooh, the temptations will come, and it depends on our commitment to Jesus that we will stand strong. So if my commitment is 100%, we will, will stand strong. If we are half-hearted, we will find excuses to justify and give in to temptations, and then we are most likely to miss God's purpose in our lives. I want to say amen to this. This is the end of my, uh, my sharing. Amen. Um, thank you for your honesty, Rosita. Um, that's what I love about um, Derek and Rosita. You, there's no uh, pretending. There's no masks. <laughs> you get it like you get it. Uh, they they they're such amazing people in that sense. They're just um, just so honest, and um, and uh, that's what I knew uh, with Rosita. Um, I knew that the Lord was going to speak to us, um, just because I know of her relationship uh, with the Lord. And so um, I really believe this is a word and season for us uh, as a church. Um, and where's that final slide? Rosita, I want to use one of your, your slides there. So very nice slides, by the way. <laughs> but that last slide, you know, we, we all get a fright when we see the word repent. And uh, we think, oh, here comes the stick again. Repent. But repent is such a beautiful word. And I've shared about it many times. But I really believe that the Lord actually wants us not even as baby Christians, but as mature Christians, 
to walk in a lifestyle of repentance. And as we engage in this road of sanctification, yes, we do start looking more like Jesus, and yes, we do start sinning less, and we overcome things that we struggled with as a baby Christian, and proverbially speaking, we start eating meat and we, we, we're off the milk. But let's face it, this side of the grave, you know, the word says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so, as your pastor... I find myself on a weekly basis repenting, you know, of, of perhaps not hectic stuff, but, but stuff that I know I need to, to grow in, you know, in, in, in coming closer to the Lord. So I want to encourage you this morning. This is a message where um, we encourage to change. We encouraged and urged this morning not to stay the same. And I want you just to be honest, as Rosita has been honest with us this morning. I want you to be honest with yourself this morning. And, and perhaps ask yourself, where can you change? Where can you, where's the Holy Spirit coming to shine a bit of a torch this morning? Or, or press a button that you think, oh, I didn't think of that. That's happened to me this week. You know, I, I'm trying to see as many of you in the week as possible. And those are... Those are good meetings, but sometimes they're challenging meetings as well because my ears and my radars are always open. I'm saying, Lord, what do you want to say to me? Because the Lord speaks to me through you as well. Um, very often, and, and, and I had one of those meetings this week, and it's just the Lord came in, and uh, he didn't really hold back. <laughs> and I walked away a bit bruised. I walked a bit, I was like, Lord, Really? You know, really, am I missing you in that area, you know, in such a way? And, and the Holy Spirit is faithful. Guys, what I want to say to you this morning is if the Lord left us unchanged, He would not be a good father. In fact, the Word says, poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Hebrews says that the Lord chastises and disciplines those whom he loves. And us young parents, we realize that actually, if, you, if, you, if you're not shaping and bending that little tree the way you should be, it's actually a lack of love. And so I just find myself, it's aina, but it's amen. Yes, Lord. Because I know if, if it doesn't come and I don't receive it, I'm going to pay the price in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, perhaps even a couple of years. And the Lord's going to say, look, I, I tried to gently, gently let you change your mind about it. That's all repentance means. Change your mind. S see the scripture. Receive a word. Receive a testimony and change your mind and walk differently. And so let's perhaps just close our eyes. And I want to challenge you this morning. As Rosita has shared, and we've sat under the word. Just allow the Holy Spirit, perhaps, just to, to speak to you this morning. Perhaps it's also an issue of, of independence, of pride. I can do this myself. What is the Lord showing you this morning? What is the area where He wants you to change? What is the area that He's lovingly perhaps showing you this morning? And will you be open, as Proverbs says, to receive that, that discipline which He gives in love this morning? What is He showing you? Let's just take a minute or two and just wait on the Holy Spirit to show us. Father, this morning we thank You that we can pray as, as David prayed in Psalm 23 that Your rod and Your staff they comfort me. Those instruments of guiding, of leading, and even sometimes of rebuke and correction, God, they guide and they comfort. And they eventually lead us to places of green pastures and still waters. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit that comes alongside to help and to show us 
the path that you want us to walk on. Father, we thank you for your gentle correction this morning, Lord. I pray for every person, Lord, you know, Holy Spirit, what you showed them. And I pray, Lord, for courage and conviction for everybody sitting here this morning. Not to just leave that as something that we're going to be, that's going to be undealt with. But Father, I pray that right now, Lord, they would make a commitment in their hearts and in their lives, Lord, to metanoia, to change, to change their mind about that thing that you want them to change, whether it's impatience, whether it's independence, Father, whether it's sin, Lord, we saw that list, God. You know how those lists go on and on and on. Father, I pray, Lord, for every heart here to be bold, to receive your grace, your rebuke, your correction that you give so lovingly this morning. May they walk and change their minds, cause them to change their minds, Lord, and cause them, Father, to walk the other way in the way that your Spirit leads. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.